we have uh, Prophet Lindsay Wergis here in our midst. Oh. How many of you know Prophet Lindsay? How many of you know? Yeah? She's not new to this house. They're very, very dear uh, friend of the father of our house, Pastor Fiji and uh, Pastor Rashmi. And uh, they know each other very, you know, for, for a very long time. And they pastor a church in Bombay called Gideonite Revival House. And we miss Pastor Santosh as well. We would really love to have him here. But thank you so much, Prophet. We are so glad. What does the Bible say? As you honor a prophet, you will receive, you will receive the prophet's reward. Can you rise up on our, on our feet and welcome <laughs> Prophet Lindsay in our midst. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so happy to be in the midst of all of you. Uh, before I say anything, I just want to take this moment uh, to honor the father and mother of this house, Pastor Priji and Pastor Rashmi. Uh, although we know each other for a very long time, Pastor Priji and I, which are childhood friends, uh, but Priji embarked on this journey of loving Jesus much earlier than I did. Uh, even though he was younger to me, um, he was a faith warrior much ahead of me. And uh, um, I think whatever BRC is today, whatever uh, you know milestones we have achieved, uh, I strongly believe it is that step of faith that he took when there's really nothing tangible to see and to hold on to. Um, so I really, you know, when he was do, taking that step at that point in time, I was wondering what this boy is doing, uh, leaving the city, coming to a new city, not knowing anyone. Uh, but God honors faith. God honors every step of faith with that we take. And on the way, God added Rashmi into his life. And together, uh, whatever uh, we are witnessing through their lives is just amazing testimony of that step of faith. Uh, so I just want to honor them this moment. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Also, the fact that this also is my father's house, uh, that makes it very special. Um, I want to take this opportunity to honor my father, Prophet Shaiju Matthew, and my mother, Prophet is Tini Matthew. The people who changed our trajectory and destiny forever, if it wasn't for them, it would have taken us another zillion years to be where we are today. Uh, BRC is very special. I remember around 2012 was the first time that I came uh, for an official visit in Bangalore and ended up ministering in BRC. Typically, that's how I am here today as well. Um, and uh, I remember uh, that Sunday was a great blessing for me. It changed my trajectory as a minister. And around, I think, November um, 2018, around that time is when me and my husband came here to minister. And uh, that was another changing point of phase in our life where God, um, while he was ministering those, those three days, God was talking to us uh, very specifically about very specific part of our lives um, where we stepped into the whole fatherhood covenant uh, and um, took a step to start a church. A lot of things happened for us after ministering here in BRC. Um, so BRC is the pulpit of BRC uh, is very special uh, because so I very strongly believe that, uh, not for you, but for myself, I believe something new is going to add to me. Uh, so I really honor and respect this pulpit. Um, you are in our prayers all the time. Uh, BRC is one of our, and as Gideonites Revival House, we always remember you in our prayers. Uh, as in when, if ever you remember us, re remember, us in your prayers, keep our church. We are three years old. 
We just recently celebrated um, our third anniversary. Um, we are a, what do you call, multilingual church. Uh, English, Hindi, Marathi, Kannada, Tamil, Nepali, <laughs> uh, and Malayali pastor. So, <laughs> um, but God is good. God is doing some amazing things there. God is surprising us every day. And uh, it's only that we together, united, can do something for the Lord, right? Uh, before I step into the word, I just want to take, we will just take some time to just host the presence of God. Uh, I don't know about you, but I was experiencing amazing presence of God. I was just so moved by what is, what by the presence of God in this place. It is so important for us uh, not to give this responsibility to a pastor or a worship leader. Uh, the responsibility to host God, the responsibility to hear from God, the responsibility to be sensitive to the move of God, the responsibility to reciprocate to the voice of God lies with us. Hallelujah. Worship team, worship leader, ministers, they can do a certain amount of things by what they carry or by what they have got for you from their prayer room. Uh, but the, the magnitude in which it can be amplified in your life determines by how much can you host him, by how much can you reciprocate to him, by how much can you... Uh, Surrender yourself in his presence. So I urge you for the next five minutes, you know, to keep every familiarity aside. Honestly, you could have been in church for 100 years, but you still lack the capacity to predict the move of God. You can hear a particular verse a hundred times, but you will still not be able to gauge the impact of that voice and that particular time. When the King of Kings and when the Lord of Lords decides to leave that heavenly galore and come in midst of you, he will never come empty handed. He never comes without an agenda. Vakhi manasiyala rabba baba. Arala ba shikara dala rada sikariya. This king has something to give to you. Ishwe rakha manadiya. Ora yala dara desa manadara gasiyala ba. Rayala rabba shikara dala rada siyara baba baba. You may not be aware, but he is the door that you were seeking for a long time. He is, he is the path, he is the way that you were seeking for a long time. He is the answer that you were seeking for the long time. This morning, may he translate that in your own language and give it to you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We are in the second half of this year. A year that we declared as a year of dominion. Dominion is not just in words or in hearing. Dominion is in practice. If that's so, then in this six months, you have to be dominating about everything that held you back. Every, every prison that was holding you back has to bow down before you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, Daddy. I am yours, Lord. These are your children. This is your place. This is your house. Move as you will, Lord. Speak as you want to, Lord. We surrender ourselves completely. Chop off everything that stands as a hindrance. Mold us, Lord. 
and make us more like you. May this be a morning of many new beginnings. May, be this, may this morning be a morning of restoration. Maybe may this morning be morning where we fall in love with you all over again, Jesus. May we leave this place with the conviction of why we love you. We give ourselves into your hands, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's here. He's moving in our midst. There is no hopeless area in your life. There is no area of your life that is beyond redemption. God chose us and, and said, I have set my gaze on you, daughter. verse that I want to share with you this morning is John 11 35 uh, if you have been in Sunday school enough you will know what John 11 35 is one of the verses that I learned first <laughs> as a child uh, so that I could say that in Sunday school and uh, Earlier in our churches, we used to have memory verse competition. So you have to learn verses by heart and you have to, you know, write it down in 20 minutes. So whoever writes the most accurate one in 20 minutes wins. So John 11.35 was everyone's favorite. <laughs> Jesus wept. Uh, God taught me a couple of things from this portion in last month. And as I was praying for you, and I was, as I was asking Lord what I have to share with you, uh, this is what the Lord gave in my heart and that's what I want to do. I want to be obedient to the voice of God. See, it's very important for us to know why we believe something, right? Uh, if we believe in certain things, if we have conviction about certain things, it is very important for us to ask why do we do that, right? Because if we have concrete reasons about why we believe what we believe, it's very easy for us to overcome certain situations because we have this truth to hold on to, right? If you ask a child, the child has an unbelievable confidence on his parents that come what may, they can depend on you, right? They can be the most mischievous. They may have got a good bashing from you in the morning. Uh, they may have cried the whole of the morning. But the very next moment, if they are facing anything, if they are in trouble, if they um, lack vision for the next step or do not, do not know what to do, they will always come to you. Right? They are not going to consider that, oh, Papa, Mama just gave me a good bashing. You know why? Because... Children have this, uh, you know, unexplainable trust and conviction that their parents are always there for them, right? They, they will help. They will, you know, and that kind of uh, gives them the ability uh, to run to you any time and every time they feel that uh, they need help, right? You will not find uh, a child sulking in a corner thinking that, do I really have parents that I can depend on? Unless you have given them concrete reasons to do so. But uh, you will find that, right? That's because that's, and that's typically how our relationship with Jesus has to be, right? 
you can hear that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can say that he walks on the water. You can hear a lot of sermon. But these sermons, what you hear, is just not good enough for you to overcome a situation. That's why Bible so specifically focuses and says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. It never said, oh, hear and understand that the Lord is good. Because everything about God is out there for you to experience. Everything. His love, His mercy, His grace, His ability to give you second chances. The, his ability to give you, you know, make supernatural breakthroughs in your life. Everything is up for grabs. You understand? And the moment everything and anything that you read from the scripture, or you hear from a man of God, or a woman of God, or a prophet, and you take that back home and you sit with it, and you say that, okay, how can I make this my revelation? How can I make this my testimony? What is it, uh, you know, what is it that I can hold on to from this word? And, and the moment you understand that, and the moment that manifests in your life, and that aspect becomes your testimony or, you know, your revelation, you will see that in situations you can hold on to that. Okay, I can give you one more example to, you know, uh, like for example, you know, I was um, jobless for two years. My husband is uh, in full-time ministry. We, we, we were there and, you know, uh, my husband went through a time of stroke, paralytic stroke, which means that we had to go to hospital, medicines, a lot of other stuff, uh, you know, financially, you know, the kind of needs that you have and all of those things. Uh, now, God had taught us in our lives and God, we had a lot of amazing experience of how God provides right? We had that experience. So when we were going through this particular experience, uh, we were not very worried about finance, right? Because we had experienced a financial breakthrough in the past, and that was our testimony. And we said, I'm holding on to that. Because if God did that in my life, maybe even if it is 10 years back, if God was able to do that in my life, he's able to do much more than this in this, right? So we held on to that, right? We held on to that. Long story short, uh, two years, uh, I don't know, we had uh, deposits coming from heaven, right? So uh, I, I, like, I, I have no shame. People usually don't want to say that they are blessed, right? Because they would like to have play that victim card. I am telling you, I'm very blessed. Um, I... I, when, we did, when we got discharged from the hospital, we paid the bill and then we had excess. And I was thinking, God, uh, why do we have excess? So, you know, Lord is like, you know, there are medicines, there are follow-ups. Uh, you know, I'm like, wow, you know, so we have sorted in advance, right? When all of this comes and we experience, we experience what God is doing, what kind of provider he is, what is the ability of God. Next time when someone comes to us and say, you know, Pastor, we have a little financial crunch, you know, I will, I will not be moved, because I have a conviction about how God provides. Now what I'm giving to this person is not words. What I'm giving to this person or even trying to impart to this person is my testimony. That's when the, that's when the anointing or the, or the power of God that I experienced gets passed from me to the person who is asking me for help. Okay, I'm saying, I'm talking, I'm not talking to people who are trying to understand Jesus. I'm talking to people here who believe that they're sons and daughters of God and they have been chosen to do something in this world. Amen. Bangalore belongs to Jesus and it will happen through you. Right? And what you don't have, you cannot give. You know? Words don't build up people. It is what you have and what you have received. That's why Bible says so much about tasting God and seeing that he's good. He's good. Yes, you can see that all the time. Someone got healed, he will say God is good. 
someone got a job they will say god is good someone had this they will say god is good but what about you you know i know you guys are celebrating month of joy joy you know it's not situational right then how do you in the darkest time of your life enjoy the joy of god because the bible says that joy is your strength right i was telling this in my church we always say that god is good all the time all the time god is good when did god start becoming good in your life what was that moment according to you when when you were when you accepted jesus christ as your personal savior or when you came to the church for the first time not really he was good to you before the foundations of the world even before you could be there on the earth you know for you to come to the church there was one person responsible god worked in that person's life first for that person to come to god god worked in that person's life you know there is a series of thing god did which you can track right from the start of this world to reach to you to bring to you to bring you to this place so he was not good because you said oh lord i am accepting you as my savior and as a return gift he said okay i'll be good to you no 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 he was good to you always even when you were on the streets of bangalore not knowing jesus and do whatever you wanted to even when you were in the strongest phase of your addiction he was still good to you and his goodness is why we smile today in fact it is his goodness that we can face tomorrow and you know we see so many things happening in an corp so many stories we hear so many people going to so many troubles and trying to kill and and i think lord how did we survive how how are we alive how did this happen my god what grace what favor what goodness of god over our lives the fact is that you and me are not able to understand that we are not able to discern it we are not able to you know be sensitive to that goodness that's why we often wait for a new way to be open because we couldn't understand what he did yesterday you you know so many people drive it's not our driving skills right that we reach from point a to point b because he's good if we have to list down reasons of why we shouldn't be alive there will be a list but because he's a good father because he is a good father and that ability to understand and to remind ourselves every day of every small things that we enjoy and telling ourselves oh this is the goodness of god will help us sustain the joy in our lives it it will never be your bank balance it will never be your promotions it will never be your accomplishment that will give you joy you know i want to begin by saying that we have to know why we believe what we believe we have to know that in our 24 hours of span in a day there is so many interventions by god because of which we face the another day yes there are things that has not been answered yes there are things that is yet to be opened is yes, there are things that is yet to be answered but the percentage of that is very less as compared to what is already done as compared to what is already opened as compared to what is already answered or as compared to whatever places is already protected you are you with me church you have to understand what this god is doing when you understand that it will be much beyond an answered prayer at an open door you will be like you know job said he gave and he took it away 
blessed be the name of the lord he is saying that in a time when holy spirit you know the way we enjoy the the nearness of god was not available and you know towards the end job says when he understood what god is he saying that till now i had only heard about god but now i have seen so imagine just by hearing god job was a person who was only hearing about god he had never seen him he had never experienced him so job just by hearing god became a righteous person and did what he did and when he was facing the most uh, devastating situation this man who has only heard about god is saying he gave and he is taken away blessed be the name of the lord see hearing gives so much of conviction then what about experiencing him that's when job says i was hearing but now my eyes have seen new testament church we are not hearers we are the ones who are experiencing god so before i move to this word i want to remind you as you celebrate the month of joy as you celebrate the next milestone of the church as you celebrate your own life don't forget all that he has done that itself will give you a conviction of what he is capable to do next i always say he does not have to prove himself he has done enough amen everyone knows this portion john 11 mary martha lazarus jesus lazarus died was there in the tomb for four days then jesus comes in the picture lazarus is alive we all know this story right we all know what happened uh, i particularly god was teaching me from this portion where it says jesus wept uh, because it is very profound very deep you can study about it a lot but still not grasp the depth of it but i would just want to share what god taught me if you are with me okay john chapter 11 if you see the first uh, portion it says now a certain man was ill lazarus of bethany uh, it's very interesting it says the village of mary and her sister martha okay it was mary who anointed the lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother lazarus was ill okay so the sister sent him saying lord he whom you love is ill but when jesus heard he said this illness does not lead to death it is for the glory of god so that the son of god may be glorified i like this first portion it says lazarus was ill lazarus is of bethany and this bethany is a village of mary and martha was mary martha and lazarus the only people in bethany no there are more people there there you can see in the further verses the whole village gathers to sympathize with this family but why is this village whole when holy spirit decided to introduce you to this place holy spirit said let me address this place as village of mary and her sister martha why and the next verse is you know why because it was this mary who anointed the lord with ointment and wiped his feet and her hair whose brother lazarus so you have to understand if it be village if it be people if it be illness of lazarus no matter what is the topic everything is known to god through mary that's how god is recognizing that situation lazarus is she lazarus from bethany what is bethany village of mary lazarus who is ill who is actually the brother of mary and in between always be decided why because you know she is the one who poured out that costly ointment on the feet of jesus and wiped it with her hair now this this 
uh, scenario where she is wiping the feet of Jesus did not happen when Lazarus was dead. It happened way before. Way before. Way, way before Mary even encountered a problem. Okay, if you can come with me, you already know what I'm trying to say. Mary didn't wait for Lazar to die so that she can show what she's capable of in terms of worshipping and giving to Jesus. In fact, if you see, this feet of Jesus is what Mary always tries to be in. Like, that is the place that she likes. The first time, it was Martha who invited Jesus to their house. But then Martha decided that kitchen is the place. And if you read the portion, it says Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. We are known by, the, by our position in the kingdom of God. And that position is not a position of a prophet or a pastor or a worship leader. That's typically your distance between the feet of Jesus and you. The proximity of your, you and the feet of Jesus will amplify everything in the spiritual realm into physical. You know, we often say, we have so much, oh, Pastor, we have heard so many prophecies. Okay, Pastor says, this is your breakthrough month. This is that, this is that. So many things we have heard. So many, but Pastor, there is no change in my life. But have you asked yourself, where are you found when heaven is look, trying to locate you? When it is kairos, when it is God's time, when it is time to talk to you, when it is time for him to come to you, when it is time for him to impart, where are you found? Are you even remotely around the feet of Jesus? We, we have learned shortcut for everything. You know, we are very smart Christians. So if we have a problem, we have three days, seven days fasting. Uh, we will, you know, we have so many methods. We have cracked in. This is how we... But maybe when we read this chapter, that's not how it is. Our relationship with Jesus... Our intimacy with Jesus, my desire to do whatever for Jesus has no relation with my current circumstances. It has no relationship with what, uh, with what I'm going through. In, because I have to be constant in my relationship, even if it is a mountain top or a valley. The only thing that was constant that Bible mentions is God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Which means that everything around you except that is going to change. And it will change. Because we are in a process of molding ourselves to become Christ-like. And we can't be who we are and become like him. So for us to be what he wants us, he will take us through paths that will change things around us. That's where our molding happens. That's where our change happens. So we look at Mary here, who's seeing Jesus for the first time, who's heard about Jesus, and this is her moment to be with Jesus. And she says, let me sit at the feet of Jesus. This is the place. This is where I... And Jesus himself says, she's taken a good portion. She's chosen a good portion and no one will take that away. Which means everything that you select apart from Jesus has a capacity to go away. Yeah. 
everything. Every dependability that you have on things that is not Jesus, on Jesus, has a capacity to go away from your life. And then Mary puts that precious ointment on his feet, wipes the feet of Jesus, uh, and that is what is registered in heaven. And now when the story is being written about Lazar and everything, it says Bethany, village of Mary. Lazar who is Hill, who is a brother of Mary. And it's so good that in the coming portion when sisters are sending the messages, Lazar, whom you love. But Bible doesn't say anything about Lazar doing anything for Jesus. So how did this love of Jesus locate Lazar? Through Mary. Your relationship with Jesus has a capacity for the love of Jesus to locate your families. You have to understand, you know, we, we often, we often cry and crib or we are often sad for things because of our ignorance because we do not know how God operates the love of Mary the act of love that Mary did is now amplified in a level where it's everyone is saying that hey Jesus loves these three people but the fact is the focus is one woman Right? And I was thinking that the amount of intimacy that we have with Jesus can also determine the destiny of the nation and of the place that we are located. Bangalore is up there to be known by your name. By the name, you know, we, I don't know if you have heard, there was a very famous prophet in Kerala. He's no more there. So he was known as on by the name of the place that he was. So imagine the name is XYZ. So he was known by that name. He was a very, very famous prophet. Uh, so once one family was bringing uh, their daughter who was possessed uh, to meet this prophet from Trivandrum. So Trivandrum and Patantita are very far away. And they were bringing this girl from Trivandrum, okay, so that the prophet can pray over her and heal her. Now, they were coming in the ambassador in those days, right? So you have those uh, milestones with the name of the places, five kilometers, 10 kilometers to go. And as they were traveling, they came to this place very close, and it's, it's wrote the name of the place and said, you know, five kilometers away. And this girl who was possessed, suddenly started manifesting and said, are you taking me to him? <laughs> you know, because that name now doesn't make any sense. That name is known by that prophet. That place is known by that prophet. And the demon started manifesting, saying, are you taking me to that man? Are you? No, you cannot take me to that man. You have to, right? The whole five kilometers. And this prophet in his prayer room already knew that she's coming. So he was waiting on the door for this ambassador to come. And uh, the moment this ambassador reached, the prophet went and opened the door and stretched and this girl came out completely healed. The demon didn't want to even have a <laughs> fight. Do you understand? And that's not just limited to that man of God. That is what we carry. Our names, you know, when the, the demon was talking, uh, he's in the New Testament, he says, I know Jesus and I know Paul. Who are you? <laughs> Look at the demon. He knows Paul in the same capacity as Jesus. Not limited to Paul alone, for us as well. Our names, the place that we stay, he shouldn't step in. He should fear. 
But that's not through fasting and rebuking. That's just through by loving Jesus. Our love for Jesus has that impact. He, he is not uh, afraid of people who can play keyboard. I hope you understand. He is not af- afraid of you because you can really sing well in the church. He is not afraid of you because you can take out some amazing scripture and speak for an hour. But if you are a lover of Jesus, then he, is, he will think twice. Because it is not easy to move a lover of Jesus. Lover of gifts, lovers of opportunities, lover of pulpits, they will come and go. But lovers of Jesus will be forever. The next portion says, Jesus loved Martha and her sister. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer. Is it that in your Bible too? He loved them. So, he ran. He took a tatkal and he ran. No, right? He loved them so much that he stayed for. Do you have the ability to recognize delays as love? You know, I know that this may not be very like, oh, you will be blessed, you will be this. Because I want to leave something with you today that can sustain your blessings. I don't want to, you know, bring something that can just give you that emotional. (laughs) Do you have the ability to recognize delays as love? Do you have the ability to see a no as love, a closed door as love? A wilderness as love, a valley as love. Only those who love him can be interested with the wilderness. Because children of God, it is in this delay that really tells you what is your character. It is in this delay that really tells you what is what are you in this relationship for. It is in this delay that tells you that you are you really here for Jesus or something else. Delays will manifest your character. What is enemy saying to? Uh, what is Satan challenging God? You remove the hedge, right? You remove the hedge and you see what job will do? He will? He will curse you. Because Satan thinks that Job's love for God is about that blessing and that hedge. Okay? And God says, do it. Just don't touch his life. Do it. And you have to see, enemy is not doing it at one go. Right? He's doing it step by step. Step by step. First, destruction. Then he's saying, blessed be the name of the Lord. Second, destruction. Then everything is gone. Everything is gone. And now enemy thinks that maybe physical blessings and children are gone. But what if something happens to his body? Then you have boils and itching and, you know, the self pain that he has to now personally go physically. His friends are saying, are you sure that you were righteous? (laughs) Like, can you take this moment to introspect your life? Wife is like, it's better you die. Life is not making, because what about all this worship, all the altars you made every week? You have to see, Job is someone right now without a friend to talk to, without a wife to rely on, without a children to see and comfort. We can talk about it, but we can't understand that situation. 
but enemy waited and waited but he never cursed god he never cursed god what about you and me what about us is our instinct at every situation to question god if that's the point then we have to relook at the love that we have for him we'll have to like as a husband and wife what do you do you you take time to introspect your relationship you learn to adjust to each other each other you learn to know each other right married people day one the way you knew your husband is not what how you know today even if before your husband talks you know what he's going to say <laughs> right even if before your wife says anything husband can really predict how much more valuable is the lover of our soul how much do you know him he is not a god who enjoys your crime he is not a god who enjoys his children being miserable he is not a god who says okay let him let him suffer a bit and then i will just come and show my grandeur no, that's not how it works ezekiel was taken to the valley of dry bones but if you read the scripture it says the spirit of the lord came on him and it was the hand of the lord that took him to the valley of dry bones so who placed him there not his sins not his he was having an amazing prophetical ministry but he was taken and placed in the valley of dry bones and he saying man of god tell me whether this can become flesh children of god do you know that you are placed in valley because there is an army supposed to be rising up through your words you are on, you are in a storm because god is believing you to walk on the water with him he is looking to partner there are many people who can partner with him on mountain top because glorious you know mountain top means at peak of everything it's glorious very less in valleys very less in wilderness but as children of god you and me have to understand that delays doesn't mean that god is not capable delays just mean that he loves you and something more better than what your mind can comprehend is coming to you hallelujah hallelujah two so two things one your love with jesus is what locates others in your family two understand the delays of god and as i always say this when you love jesus his silence is audible okay and that's what we believe in we'll come ahead now you have to understand that jesus is now starting a journey to go back to bethany okay he's now decided it's my time that i'm going to go and do what god has asked me to now this is a place where everyone is waiting to kill jesus for obvious reasons he has disciples uh, who are scared now they are walking and then jesus is saying lazar must be you know he's sleeping nothing is going to happen disciples are confused he's sleeping it to theek hi ho jayega what is the whole fuss about and then jesus is like oh god you will not understand he looks as like no he is dead and for your sake we are going so that you believe and then thomas says let's go die with him this is a conversation happening with jesus and his disciples now what is the path that jesus has taken jesus has taken a path to bethany to do one of the most incredible thing while he is on this earth okay and he is saying i am doing this so that these people can believe who the disciples who is walking day in and day out now imagine this journey 
right they are walking and the disciples are walking now jesus is walking giving glory to the father about what is going to happen and then you have disciples walking oh we are going to die oh we are going to oh god this is it this is it i thought we thought he is going to be the king this is this is not just the story of disciples haven't you walked or spent your life with only uncertainty we all sing we all love to sing this song because he lives i can face tomorrow right and imagine one bad day in the office with your boss as a cjo i may lose my job as a cjo why are you not able to sing that song at that moment <laughs> I will say that I Jesus says that I've come to give life an abundance of life. You and me cannot walk with Jesus expecting death. You know who is the biggest uh, stumbling block between you and your miracle? Hmm? Your mouth you look at your husband and you say kabhi nahi sudrega ye aadmi the lord is speaking to some people i guess <laughs> you know what nahi sudrega because the power of life and death was on your tongue what you set loose on earth is set loose in heaven what you bind on earth is bound you just bound your partner you are prophesying over his life saying he's not going to change you're prophesying over your wife that she's not going to change you're prophesying over your children oh his ka future to pastor mera bachcha mand hai one parent came to us and अब आई थिंक हमारा बच्चा ना थोड़ा बुद्धू है मंद है चीज इन बॉम्बे यू यूज वर्ड मंद आई डोंट नो वट इट इज लाइक इन इन अ वे अ लिटिल रिटार्डेड काइंड यू नो माई हजबेंड इज मे बी नॉट बिकॉज ही वॉज क्रिएटेड बट बिकॉज यू आर द मदर एंड सम सिचुएशन कम्स एंड यू सीज ओ माई गॉड ओ आई यू जस्ट वॉन्ट टू डाई i just want to die how many times have you proclaimed death over yourself you you study you don't get you don't understand enough and you say oh my future is gone i will never be what i want to be who bound you demons we give uncred and you a credit to satan so many he's like i didn't do it but thank you <laughs> and that's why some bondages don't break even after 100 prophets have massaged your head because the prophet that tied you was you and if there is a prophet that can set you loose it is you you understand if you see jesus has done something that is your indication that you can do it too Amen. that's what peter says lord can i also walk is a fisherman if anyone knows what seas can do it is him but he is saying can i also walk this come on do it people say oh he drowned but he is the only one who walked even if it was for a second this morning if lord is reminding you of any declarations that you have done over your life that you have done over your marriage that you have done over your children that you have done over your future this is the morning that you can break it in the name of jesus 
No. No. You have to say, no, not my life. Not my children's life. Not my marriage. Not my son. Not my daughter. I am the prophet of my house. Are you seeking for a prophet to come? I'm sorry, you are the designated prophet of your house. What you cannot believe for your house will not happen in your house. But what you can imagine, what you can vision with God, what you can dream with God, it will manifest in your life. It will. I know this is prophetical word for someone. This is not something that I prepared. This is what I'm hearing from the Lord. Sons and daughters, you may be a new Christian, but what I want to tell you is that the moment you accepted him as your savior and you got baptized, Bible and God declares you as righteous in front of this world. That label itself is good enough for you to overcome every demon that not just was fighting you, but was fighting every generation before you. There may be generational curse in your family that must have affected people in your family, that must have affected you in certain capacity, but with you it ends. With you it ends. Raya la baba baba, shikara dala la baba baba. You are not ones who can look at, you know, Odysseys and say, Oh, my mom ko bhi tha, my dad ko bhi tha, ye to hamare family mein hereditary hai. No, 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 no. Your family is not that. You are part of a very big family, a divine family. That DNA is something else. That DNA crushed the head of the enemy. That DNA gave abundance of life. Raya la baba ba shikara dala raba siara baba baba. Yel kono soto robo baba baba. Who told you because your fellow, you know, batchmates they failed and they did not land anywhere? You will also not. No, no, no. If God operated in the same logic as this world, we need not serve Him. We need not serve him. But our God is not as per our logics. If there are students who are listening to me today, you may have a certain ability. You may not have as great ability as maybe someone who's sitting besides you. But remember your creator, he that formed you. is able to do much more. He that called you is faithful to keep you till that day. Today I know that the Lord is, is breaking some prisons that the mind had created so that you couldn't look into your future. You thought and you told yourself that there is no future. You believed that you are mediocre. But this morning, the Lord is changing all that. In your workplace, in your workplace, in your workplace, Oh, Jesus, I break the spirit of mediocrity in this place that has found roots in the heart of people. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. Excellence is your portion. Amen. We'll just quickly come ahead. A lot of things God, Jesus reaches there. There's an conversation between Martha and Jesus there's a and then they say that you know to Mary that Mary he's calling you and then Mary runs okay uh, verse 28 it says 
when she had said this she went and said mary in private the teacher is here and he is calling you the moment she heard she ran she went everyone thought that she's going to the lazarus tomb so that she can cry because she's a sister now you see verse 32 now she comes and sees jesus and he says now when mary came to where jesus was and saw him he fell at his there is something about mary and the feet of jesus it's like if she meets him there's no way that she can stand and talk to him she has to be at the feet of jesus she is at the feet of jesus she only has one thing like lord if you were there my brother may not have been dead and when jesus saw her weeping when jesus saw her weeping suddenly in the light of mary he is also seeing other jews weeping right as i told you earlier right mary was the focus and through mary was everyone else was seeing suddenly may jesus saw mary weeping and then he saw other jews also crying and it says he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled and he said where have you laid them they said to him lord come and see and jesus wept a simple question if you hear a phone call of someone close to you dying would you cry at that moment or you wait patiently to reach that place and cry the moment you hear you will be moved when jesus heard about lazarus he's like chill this is for for glory of god but now here it says jesus wept see jesus is on the way to resurrect lazarus so obviously he is not crying because lazarus is dead but bible says when he saw mary weeping he troubled him mary's pain troubled jesus that's what i said he is not a god who loves to see your misery it is a sad news jesus already said that it is going to be for the glory of god that's why he is there in bethany to resurrect lazarus but the fact that mary is someone close to the heart of jesus the fact that mary always chooses the feet of jesus her crying moves him her crying troubles because he in his fullness as god he took uh the image of man to go through everything that we went through if there is a god that knows our pain just the way we feel it it is jesus betrayal loneliness poverty everything you have to understand that when it's written that jesus wept it is just showing you that how personal is this god how personal your prayer room can you envision that when you go on your knees with your tears do you have the ability to see the reciprocation from the side of jesus 
Because if we can, we will never say, Oh Lord, have you you're not hearing me, oh Lord? So Naini de Ra, you're not hearing, Lord. Oh, I'm not going to pray anymore. What is the use? But look at this place. He wept. Not because he was un- uncertain of what is going to happen to Lazar. He was there. Lazar is going to be resurrected. That emotion, that crying, was a reciprocation to what Mary is feeling. Because Mary is someone who's close to his heart. Mary is someone who is imprinted on the heart of Jesus because of what she does on the feet of Jesus. That's why I said, if you and me are lover of Jesus, if you and me are in a relationship with Jesus, there's absolutely nothing that can worry us or scare us. There are no weapons, no sickness, no situations, no debt, no curse that has the ability to swallow you and me. Because you and me are never alone. No, I always imagine this way when Daniel was thrown in the den of lions. If you read Hebrews, the chapter of faith, it says, by faith, they shut the mouth of lions. Do you know? I often think that what exactly would have happened there? Is it like Daniel going there and just personally shutting the mouth of each lion, saying, you cannot eat me? Or is it the fact that he was there because of God and with God? Because when the lions would have seen Daniel, I'm sure it was not just Daniel. It was God with him. And then how can a creation swallow a creator? When Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego went into the fire, God is like, wait, let me join. There was a fourth person. When, and it clearly says, when they came out of the fire, they were not smelling like fire. What happened? What changed the nature of fire? The presence of God. But these are Old Testament. So what about New Testament? Bible says that the fullness of Christ is given to the church. Everything that is in Christ is being handed over to the church. The same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead is the same power, is the same Holy Spirit that is inside you. And to think, you who is carrying such a glory, you who is carrying such a power, is sitting in a corner of your house and playing the victim card. It's the lie of the enemy. It's a lie of the enemy so that you cannot see yourself as a victorious person. He wants you to feel victimized all the time so that you don't use what you have, and that's Jesus. Can I say one more thing before I pray for you? How many days was Lazarus in the tomb dead? Huh? Four days. It's there in the Bible. How many days was Jesus in the tomb? Three. Lazarus? was? For those who love Jesus, because we love him, we have the ability to do greater things. This was not just about the resurrection of Lazar. This was a small preview of what is about to happen. 
This is a small preview of a resurrection of Jesus. But when God decided to display that through his son, he made him do four days. Only God who wants his children to break his record. The reason why I'm sharing this to you is because if we have to live a life of dominion, we have to know what we are carrying. We have to know what we are carrying. In every situation that you step in, you step in that place as victorious and you just release that victory in that place. If you understand that, you will realize that many victories came and went by but you couldn't recognize it. I sense in my spirit an unusual presence of the heart of God in this place. This morning, O Yala Kedurubu, Rala Rababasha Tarasiska. This morning, we are going to break the yoke that is upon the studies of study life of our children. If there is any parent who is praying for it, if your child is close to you, you can take the child and prophesy over your child. You know, Joseph's father was a dreamer, right? But as a dreamer, he couldn't understand his dreamer's son. Because by the time the mantle came from the father to the son, Jacob, he understands elder brother going to younger brother. Right? So the first dream of Joseph was okay. But the second dream was a little problematic. Because there the father was also bowing down. That's where even Jacob, a dreamer himself, became uncomfortable. But you have to understand that the mantle, when it came from father to son, was not just dreaming, but was interpreting. Can you see how God amplifies from one generation to the other generation? Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just ask, Lord, Lord, fill me with your love. I just want to fall in love with you all over again, Lord. I want to represent you. It was the heart of God to rescue Loth. Because Loth is in connection with Abraham. Right? But Loth lacks the resume to be saved. He doesn't have the credibility to be saved. He doesn't have a lifestyle that justifies being saved from the punishment that is coming over Sodom and Gomorrah. But the heart of God wants to save 
So what does he do? Even before Sodom can be destroyed, even before a punishment can come over the city, Abraham is placed in Lot's life. And God knew that Abraham will remember. And so before going to Sodom and Gomorrah, there's a pit stop at Abraham's house. And God says, I have to let him know. And God tells him. And he starts negotiating with God. 150 people, even if there is one. Because Abraham is thinking that maybe because he was walking with me for such a long time, maybe he was able to live a life worthy of this. Maybe Loth is, you know, is living a life pleasing to God. So he's interceding. But the fact is he was not worthy. But the Lord says, I got the point. See, it was not because of Abraham that Lord got saved. It's because of God only. It's because God placed Abraham in Lot's life. A person that can remember. That is what is your spiritual authority. Because someone remembers. Because someone is capable to stand in gap even when you are not willing to. The Lord tells me there are so many individuals here who has been saved like that because someone else stood in gap. Because someone else remembered you. Because someone else interceded for you. Moving in our midst, I worship you.
can see your love is better than all the others that I see and I breathe in deep oh I love your goodness your And now I can see your love is better than all the others that I see. And now I'm breathing deep. Oh, love your goodness. Your Yes, Lord, delay is no denial. Thank you, Lord, that we will rest, that we will rest on you. Knowing that you have brought us till this day, and Lord, you will take care of us. You will take care of us. Lord, you have proven it all on the cross for paying everything for our shame, our condemnation. And Lord, as we have the elements in our hand, Father God, we celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your goodness, what you have done for us, what you have done for each and every one of us who is present here. Lord, we come in agreement of that goodness, of that love that you have shown for us. Knowing that you have already done. Knowing that you have already done for us. Can you thank him? Can you just thank him and say, Lord, thank you for what you have done. And I'm no more a victim. I no more carry the mindset of a victim. And Lord, I know that you have already ahead of my future, of my tomorrow, so that I will rest in you, I will enjoy you every single day, that I will fall in love with you every single day. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, let's partake in the communion together. Can we begin to bless the name of the Lord here? Let's worship him, give him glory, adore his holy name. The God that was, the God that is, and the God that is to come. Let's begin to worship him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We worship you in this place today, oh God. You're worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised, oh God. You're worthy to be glorified. We bless you. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let Heaven and nature 
Hallelujah. Amen. The joy of the Lord is. I got my mind made up and I went on back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Your mind. 
my word. I stand along with you to find pleasure of sin. I stand along with you. I made up my mind. Jesus is a winner man. Jesus is a winner man. Jesus is a winner man. A winner man, all the time. 
Dance now, come on. <laughs> like got my mind made up. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Are you happy this morning? Yes. Yes. Are you the winner, man? 
Can you hold the hand of the person standing next to you say that I am a winner man? You are a winner man. So together we're going to do the benediction. Ready? Ready? Okay, let's do it in the count of three, two, one. I am the Gideon of the Lord in this house. My family name is Bangalore Revival Center. My assignment is to bring revival to the nation. I say yes and amen to the voice of God for 2022. My hands are clothed in diligence and my heart is filled with worship. My weapons are prayer, praise and promises. I am a mighty hero because the Lord is with me. And because of my diligence, I will have dominion. Dominion over every memory from the past that has traumatized me. Dominion over the fears and battles I face in my present. Dominion over every scheme of Satan over my tomorrow. And because of your presence with me, people everywhere will look favorably on me. And as a church, your presence is with us. So we are a set apart people in Bangalore and in India. You make your goodness revealed to us, your chosen people. You make your name known to us, your children. We are the objects and the carriers of your mercy to the end of the earth. Now, with the God of peace, our Yahweh Shalom, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of this church, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, May he equip us with all that we need for doing his will. May he produce in us through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever.